Family and Consumer Sciences Extension at the University of Kentucky. Our agents share research knowledge with individuals, families, and communities to improve quality of life. Building strong families, building Kentucky. It starts with us. Hello, I'm Vicki Wynn, Family and Consumer Sciences Agent at the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service in Marshall County. And today I would like to talk to you about making a robust, nutritious, delicious meal for you and your family. And we're going to talk all about lasagna. In making lasagna, first of all, we're going to talk about what goes into the sauce. Uh, we're going to talk about what ways we can prepare the noodles or the pasta and also the types of cheeses and then how to put all of that together. In addition to, we're going to talk about how to store and reheat leftovers because one of the best thing about making a large casserole such as lasagna is having leftovers and cook once and eat twice. Sometimes cooking once and eating three or four times. And we'll talk about how to freeze and reheat lasagna. We'll talk about all the ingredients and then some tips and tricks that I have learned in making lasagna over the past several months. Well, first of all, let's talk about making the sauce for our lasagna. There are so many recipes, and today I'm not going to focus on one particular recipe because you may have a family favorite. You may have one that meets your dietary needs better than others, and we want to just explore the different ingredients that go into a recipe and how you may be able to change the ingredients up, how you may be able to adapt that recipe to better fit what your family enjoys or the types of things that you need to avoid and not put in that recipe. So first of all, we'll talk about the sauce and the things that go into the sauce and knowing that we have options to use already prepared sauce like jarred sauce that there are so many flavors, so many types that you can buy at the grocery store. Uh, marinara sauce is a very good basic sauce. Uh, it will take two quarts or 64 ounces to make a nine by 13 pan of lasagna. So keep in mind whatever type of sauce that you use, that basically two of uh, those containers, of about 32 ounces each, uh, would be required to make most recipes to make a 9 by 13 pan. Um, a lot of the meat that you may put in your sauce uh, could either be Italian sausage, and <clears throat> the sweet Italian sausage is seasoned differently than just regular sausage. When we think about breakfast sausage, it has salt, pepper, and sage. Uh, in sweet Italian ground sausage, we know that it has additional uh, spices such as uh, anise seeds and it also has some fennel seeds in it as well. And it gives it a different flavor. It really makes that sauce pop whenever you add this in your sauce. Um, <clears throat> also, there's a mild Italian which has different seasonings in it and not quite as sweet, not quite as robust as the having the fennel. Uh, if you know much about fennel, you know that <clears throat> it is more of a licorice uh, flavor, kind of a sweet but yet unique flavor. So when it is used in the sauce, make sure that you do enjoy that flavor. Make sure that that's something that your family likes to eat. And of course, <clears throat> ground beef, just regular ground beef um, is good in a lasagna sauce. You can choose to season it however you like with all of the different seasonings. Uh, we know that fresh onion, fresh garlic is also good. Uh, in our sauces that we use for lasagna. And let's talk about the different types of tomato products that go into 
a good sauce for lasagna. You'll need some tomato paste, some tomato sauce, and also some crushed tomatoes. So three different types of tomato flavors will really give it a, a very well-balanced uh, flavor for the sauce for your lasagna. And it, it's a good variety of flavor and texture as well. And I have the sugar here. A lot of people tell me they really enjoy putting a little sugar in their sauce for lasagna. And that may range from a tablespoon of sugar. I've had some people tell me they put as much as a fourth to a half a cup. And so that depends on your family and how um, you enjoy your sauce. But um, thinking about the meat and what type of meat you use may dictate how much sugar or how much sweetness you want to add to your lasagna sauce. So keeping in mind, we're using three different types of tomato products. <clears throat> you have options of three different types of meat and the fresh vegetables. <clears throat> you could also use any of the peppers, also um, green peppers, sweet or um, milder peppers is what is recommended for sauce in lasagna. And there are a lot of options. Of course, Italian spices come in a lot of different forms. You can buy these in uh, the produce section. Uh, you can find fresh herbs, fresh parsley, uh, all kinds of fresh um, herbs and spices. And of course, that really adds uh, a good distinct flavor to your recipe. Some of the seasonings that we have, of course, you can buy Italian seasoning. But if you don't have Italian seasoning and want to make your own, Typically, it is going to be made up of thyme, and of course, there would be some garlic. There would also be some marjoram, and we would have also some basil, and add some rosemary, and then the last one, oregano. So if you make your own, you can either put what you like or don't like into that sauce and just make sure that um, your family is familiar with those spices and know that they do enjoy them. But this is a good uh, recipe that you can incorporate your fresh herbs and spices that you may grow at home. And I like the fresh parsley that can be grown at home and windowsill gardens. And a lot of people tell me they grow their herbs in pots out on the patio. And it's just a really uh, good recipe to incorporate those, spread, those fresh herbs and spices. So now that we know what is going into our sauce, uh, we'll talk a little bit about our noodles. And of course, lasagna noodles typically come in a box that uh, they're a standard length that's probably going to fit your 9 by 13 pan. But not sure if you're aware there are different types of noodles. Uh, this is what we just call a regular standard noodle. Then there is an oven ready noodle that is also available in the supermarket. Oven ready noodles do not have to be boiled before putting them in the recipe, before you layer your ingredients and incorporate those noodles. So for the oven ready, they're a little bit thinner. Some people don't prefer them because they are thinner and they do not tend to, help, to hold up as well um, in the recipe and after baking. But the regular noodles I have found you do not have to boil them, even though package directions is going to tell you how you need to boil those and how you need to prepare them to layer in your recipe. You do not have to boil these if you incorporate them into your pan with the sauce, with the cheese, and refrigerate for at least five hours. So you can make that early in the day or even three days before uh, you can prepare that. You can um, store it in the refrigerator for up to three days when you make it ahead. So knowing that you can use these 
standard noodles that are a little thicker. They hold together really well and you can incorporate that in your recipe if you refrigerate before baking. So the cheeses is the third element in this. And you know, lasagna essentially is just a casserole. It's a large casserole with layers, just like a lot of other types of casseroles that we make. So we have our sauce, we have our noodles, and then we have our cheese. And typically, I like to use three types of cheese in my lasagna. Uh, there is grated Parmesan cheese, which is uh, very flavorful. Um, it calls the, usually the recipe calls for a little bit less of the grated Parmesan than it does the mozzarella. In most recipes, you're going to find that the bulk of the cheese is going to be mozzarella and it melts really well. It melds very well with all of the other ingredients and it, it's just the standard for most lasagnas. Now the third type <clears throat> of cheese that is included in most lasagna recipes is ricotta cheese. And sometimes it will even say you could substitute your cottage cheese for ricotta. So I'm going to share just a little tip with um, ricotta cheese, of course, comes in a container such as this, and it takes one container per recipe for a nine by 13 pan. I like to combine one egg with this container of ricotta and about a half a teaspoon of parsley. So if you have fresh parsley, if you have dried parsley, um, either one works really well. Sometimes it's hard to spread this in a layer over those noodles. And I have found if I use a small portion scoop, I can scoop out and even make 12 portions. A nine by 13 pan will yield 12 portions and I can scoop out 12 portions and lay on those noodles, then pour the sauce over it. And it's much easier to deal with. It's much easier to spread that across your recipe. So just keeping in mind, the portion scoop is very handy to help us to put that recipe together and make sure that it assembles the way that we want it to. So we're going to assemble with sauce on the bottom and then noodles, then our ricotta cheese, and then another layer of sauce, and then the mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. So we're going to repeat until we have three layers total and then it's ready to bake. Well, sometimes you want to store that in the refrigerator before you bake it. And I know it, it's sometimes hard to carve out enough time before you need a meal such as lasagna and have ample time to prepare it, <clears throat> to bake it, because typically it's going to take about an hour to bake. So if you want to freeze that unbaked lasagna, you certainly could do that, or you could bake it and then freeze it. Uh, you know, in the grocery store, when you shop for uh, meals that are already assembled and prepared, ready to bake or ready to prepare at home, um, they have pans of lasagna. And I thought, you know, it, it's, very much the same at home when you prepare that and want to bake it later or if you want to bake it now eat some of it and then refreeze it or freeze it for later so there, there's all kinds of ways that we can um, prepare that and yet have it at a time that is more convenient so let's say that um, you've made your lasagna you've cooked it uh, your family has eaten all they want to eat. Uh, you can keep the leftovers in your refrigerator for up to five days. So you can either wrap that really well or put a lid on, make sure it's airtight and keep that in the refrigerator for at least five days. Um, you can also portion it out, put it in smaller containers and then reheat that in the microwave. 
uh, or in the oven at 350 until that cheese starts to bubble again. So um, th that's one of the good things I think about a large meal such as lasagna is that you can store and reheat those leftovers for later or you can share those with other people. Um, talking about the different size pans for your lasagna, uh, this is a 9 by 13 pan. In fact, it, this is called a lasagna pan. Just keep in mind it has a non-stick uh, interior surface and make sure that you're using one of your safe utensils to um, work with that and portion it and serve, making sure that you don't want to scratch that surface. Um, there's also just the aluminum pans or pans made of other metals uh, that are reusable, but this is a good size for making lasagna. And it's always important to use some of your nonstick spray if you're using aluminum pans because um, it tends to stick because of all the cheese and all the sauce that tends to bake at uh, a longer time. So we want to make sure that we've used our nonstick spray in the bottom, that we want to um, make sure that we've got the pans that are the appropriate size. It, for example, if you're doing this for a single family, maybe four or five people, this would be a great size. Um, when I make lasagna, sometimes I have enough left to prepare uh, in a loaf pan. And I know I've given these to my parents when, when I make the lasagna and have some left. And this is makes a, for a perfect size for sharing with one or two people. And um, it, the same cooking time applies to this size, but the ingredients are layered the very same. It just takes a lot less ingredients. Um, you may need to break your noodles and see if they are going to fit. They may be just a little bit long, especially for that first layer. But that's, that's not a inconvenience at all, and you can do that. But uh, you can make those uh, noodles fit whatever size pan you have. So we want to make sure that we're using the appropriate size pan. Uh, they also make lasagna pans with lids. And if you're going to share that with someone. And then this is one that is a kit that has even a carrier for the bottom. So sometimes lasagnas are heavy. I've had some that weighed as much as 10 pounds. So lasagna tends to be heavy because of all the ingredients and it's a little hard to handle sometimes, but we want to make sure to always support that bottom of the pan. Don't carry by the sides and expect that weight to stay evenly distributed. We want to make sure that we are preparing that so that we can um, carry it safely and make sure that the family it's prepared for um, gets to enjoy that. So we've talked about how the ingredients come together, how to layer those ingredients, and how to store and reheat those leftovers. Um, if you want to freeze the unbaked lasagna, it's a good idea to layer your pan with foil to start with. And if you want to prepare that in a pan that you don't want to uh, get messed up and you can layer that and then you can go ahead and assemble in your pan after you have coated it with the foil and after it's all assembled you can cover the outside with foil put it in the freezer and let it freeze then you can lift out that frozen uh, block of lasagna and wrap it really good in aluminum foil or you can put it in a freezer bag and label it and use it to bake later. When you take it out, you want to take all the foil off, put it in your pan, let it thaw overnight in the refrigerator and then it's ready to bake. 
So that's just a way that you're thinking ahead, um, you're, you're prepared for maybe a meal. Uh, if you've ever had a, a large family meal, you're going to have friends or family over, you want to spend time with them instead of working in the kitchen so much. That's an ideal way to have everything ready to go and you're ready to bake and spend the time with uh, those that are coming to eat with you. Um, if you want to uh, freeze a baked lasagna, you can do this very same way uh, by lining the pan with foil and then bake it, um, remove from that pan, put it, wrap it really well and put it in the freezer. Make sure you've labeled it as far as the date and then you can freeze and reheat uh, either in whole or you can cool it and prepare individual servings or slices. And again, this is another way that you can uh, keep it for up to a month this way if it's already been uh, baked. So that, that's a good way to share with someone else. Um, we've talked about the different ways that you can store, reheat, freeze, and reheat. Um, and let's talk just a little bit about some tips related to ingredients. We talked about um, Italian sausage and ground meat, ground beef. Um, you, some recipes will call for two pounds. You can either use two pounds of ground beef, you can use two pounds of ground Italian sausage, or you can use one pound of each. So there's no hard and fast rule on that. It, it's really a, a very flexible uh, choice for putting your recipe together. And whatever you like, it gives it a very good flavor when you combine the beef and the sausage. So that's definitely something that uh, you can try. Uh, also talking about the sugar, that is to taste. And so we said from one spoonful up to a half a cup, just whatever your family likes. Um, I know some people who think uh, it's not a good dish if it doesn't have some sugar in it. So that to them just enhances the flavor. So that again, sugar is, is to taste even if it's not listed in your recipe as one of the ingredients. Also, the Italian seasoning, if you want to make your own, uh, the basic recipe would be basil, oregano, rosemary, thyme, and marjoram. Um, some of the others, of course, fennel seeds um, will make Italian flavors pop. So if you want a more sweet tomato flavor with your sauce, uh, you would need to leave out the fennel seeds because it, it has a very unique uh, flavor that it adds and uh, a lot of people don't prefer it in their recipes. When we talked about uh, ricotta cheese, um, you can make your own ricotta with just milk, lemon juice, with vinegar and salt. We have those proportions here at the Extension Office if you're interested in learning more about that. Just contact us so we can give you that information. Of course, ricotta cheese comes in this form. A lot of people substitute um, in the recipe, they will substitute um, cottage cheese instead of ricotta. And I was noticing when I was shopping recently that now they have a whipped cottage cheese, which would make it very easy to substitute for the ricotta. So, of course, you can use regular cottage cheese. You can whip that with a hand mixer or you can take a potato masher and make it the consistency and texture that you need to spread it. And also you can mix an egg with it and your parsley, just like we've done here with the ricotta. So those are some tips that I, I find helpful uh, in addition to using regular noodles and being able to just use the regular instead of oven ready so that you have the thicker um, noodles and that they contribute nicely to your recipe. Uh, also keeping in mind that the 9 by 13 pan is going to yield 12 servings. Um, in the pans 
that we have that are smaller. Of course, this size is a loaf pan. This is another loaf pan. And these will yield anywhere from four to six servings. So it, it's good to know you have options when you assemble your recipes and for whatever purpose you have, whatever um, family needs that you may have, you can adapt that depending on the size. Storing lasagna, we want to make sure that leftovers are covered when they're stored in the refrigerator, that they will keep up to four days if they are covered. Uh, if you want to make it ahead and not bake it for a few days, you have three days in the refrigerator that you can leave that covered and keep it at the proper temperature for three days before you actually bake it. Um, and in the freezer, we want to make sure that we've used the foil, that we've wrapped it tightly, uh, even a, a, like a wrap with plastic wrap over the aluminum is uh, a good practice. And you can wrap this and freeze it for up to two months. We say one to two months is optimal but bake it to 165 degrees internal temperature. And that means baking at 350. Typically a recipe is going to take about an hour. And it always tells us to let it rest. If you've seen that in a recipe to let it rest. And that is, it helps to bring the temperature down a little bit. It helps all those ingredients to stick together. And you know, sometimes when we've tried to remove something when it's still too warm and it tends to fall apart, well, if we let it rest, it's more apt to stick together and come out in a nice portion size. So we want to make sure that we have handled it properly. Also, our store-bought sauce, uh, it's going to take two quarts for one pound. This is 25 ounces, so it's a little bit different. You may have to Always read the labels to see what um, the weight is how, or how much is in um, the quantity that you're purchasing. But it's going to take about two quarts for a 9 by 13 pan. We want to make sure that um, we have enough because it does take quite a bit of sauce for a 9 by 13 pan. Um, also, if that sauce seems a little thick, uh, sometimes if there's a lot of vegetables added, um, we want to add just a little bit of water so that that does help us soak in those noodles. And we want to make sure that it's not too thick and it will bake properly. Um, we've talked about a lot of ingredients and we've talked about meat. And I know um, some people are more strict with their dietary needs. Some people are vegetarians by choice and that's perfectly good too. We can still prepare lasagna and I have prepared some lasagna for vegetarians that needed only certain vegetables. I've used squash, I've used zucchini, I've used mushrooms, uh, of course peppers and onions. But um, the reason I'm sharing all of this information with you is I, I really have learned a lot over this past several months of preparing a lot of lasagna. But there's an organization that I volunteer for and it's called Lasagna Love. And Lasagna Love is um, a nonprofit service organization that is nationwide. And it began during the pandemic. Uh, as a response to assisting families who couldn't get out or couldn't get the necessary food that they needed. Um, a lot of people were going through difficult times during the pandemic and just needed assistance with a meal. So uh, a mom and her young child started Lasagna Love and uh, just in response to trying to reach out and help people. Uh, who were struggling with um, various types of things. And um, I've been volunteering since January. Of course, when the, we were impacted by the tornado in December, uh, the request for meals um, rose dramatically. So we needed more volunteer chefs and we needed people to step up and say, yes, I'd be willing to make a lasagna meal for a family um, maybe a couple times a month or 
uh, two families once a month. And um, I encourage you to go to the website, lasagnalove.org, if you are interested in either requesting a meal for someone or if you're interested in volunteering um, as a chef to prepare and deliver to families. So I hope you've enjoyed the information that I've shared today about uh, preparing lasagna and the many different ways that we can um, put that together and, and make it unique for um, whatever a family likes. And if you need more information about this or other programs related to food and nutrition, please call the Marshall County Extension Office. Our number here is 270-527-3285. And we're located on Mayfield Highway in Benton, Kentucky. Thank you.